Like, yep. Oh, I think we're live now. Hi. Yay! It didn't do our countdown. Hey, everybody. So if you caught the beginning of that, we were talking about um, fun performances from high school, which has nothing to do with what we're talking about today. <laughs> so welcome. Um, and on that note, just want to give a little... Um, if there's any technology issues, like starting before we're ready um, to just, you know, be kind. It's just technology and we're doing our best. Uh, but we do have um, Kelly Service in the background and she's supporting us to take care of anything that might happen. Um, also, if you want to drop your comments below, we'll actually be answering those throughout. And if you're watching the replay, we will come back and answer those questions. So it's okay if you're not watching this live. Um, still add your questions and comments and we'll respond to those um, when you do. Um, also, invite people because we'd love to share. So today, um, I'm excited to introduce Emily Hartman. She is a plastic surgeon and she's a wellness-minded plastic surgeon who has um, a lot of integrity and her intentions are to make sure that you are really um, getting the care that is best for you and to not just sell you on something that you might regret in the future. So it's pretty big. And uh, welcome, Emily. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It really is an honor to be here. And it's neat for me to be on the other side of interviewing because I've been doing my share of Facebook lives. <laughs> and I can mm -hmm. definitely say that being interviewed is the harder part. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, I just am really uh, honored to be here. Thank you. Well, I'm glad to have you here. And also, you're brilliant. So the nice part about being interviewed is that you already have all the answers in there, and they're just going to come out. So don't stress about that. No. Um, but if you do want to share a little bit about yourself and how, because um, you've had quite a journey into Western medicine and then sort of holistic um, approach to that. Mm -hmm. And so... Love to hear a little bit about that. Absolutely. About you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you. I am originally from Chico, born and raised, and went to Chico High and Chico State for my undergrad. And then um, I went off to college on the East Coast and went through the traditional, um, uh, you know, medical training. And I actually became a plastic surgeon because. I was originally going to do neurosurgery because I love surgery. I've always liked dissecting things, but I really love um, creating instant change. And then my last rotation, I met a young girl on a plastic surgery rotation. And before this, I only knew plastic surgery for me was just Dr. 90210, you know, the guy. With the oh, yeah. Dr. Ray. And that's all I knew about plastic surgery. And so I kind of walked in with my own prejudgments, for sure. And my first patient was a young girl. She was 18 and had just had reconstructive surgery on her breast because one breast just didn't develop. And so I'm seeing her on her first morning after this, and she's talking to me about it and in tears. And just telling me how much she'd been looking forward to it and she um, was how much it had impacted her life in terms of her self-esteem. And because of that, she got into drugs and was, you know, doing things that she wasn't proud of, just have working through this inner inner issue. Um, and I was just absolutely like, oh my gosh this is my jam. Like, this is why, what I want to do. I want to help people in this really amazing, um, tangible and intangible way. And I love the psychology behind it. Um, I love finding out what makes people tick. And so that's really got me interested in plastic surgery. Plus the operations are just really, really cool and artsy and, and creative. Um, so so then I went through residency for plastic surgery in Wisconsin, and um, I started having my own children. 
And I, you know, started on my own wellness journey, just trying to combat the stress uh, of, of my life at the time and how not to go, you know, like not to go crazy because it was just such an insane time of my life. So it's yeah. to be more reading and um, I became a plant, I changed my diet to plant-based and um, started doing some yoga and, and those sort of things just started to click into place for myself. And then um, I went to fellowship in Los Angeles for uh, cosmetic surgery. And then I came back to Chico to establish a private practice. And all the while, just staying in tune with myself and reading lots of books and learning more about Ayurvedic medicine. And now I'm in this, I'm in five years into my practice and caring for my own patients. And I'm just really starting to put the pieces together and use what I've uh, learned through my own experience to take care of people in a more kind of whole person way, holistic way. Um, and it's, it's been amazing. Yeah. It's um, one of the things I think there can be um, a different perception of, you know, the 90210 version of, plastic surgery. And I love that you have found that you can help people look on the outside the way that they feel on the inside, you know, that um, they feel complete, but their body isn't expressing that to them. And so that's, yeah, that's such an amazing gift. You know, there's a very um, kind of in vogue term right now, which is alignment. Uh, You know, people are using that term a lot. And that's really what I feel that I do as a plastic surgeon is to help people feel as though their outsides reflect how they feel on the inside. And that congruency leads to a sense of well-being. And the population that I care for the most that really embodies this concept is the trans population. Mm -hmm. So um, I do a fair number of top surgery for um, transgender patients either going from male to female or female to male. Um, and, and it's just a, it's, it's an incredible journey to say the least, but they definitely embody this idea of, of alignment leading to uh, a happier life. And that's, you know, at the end of the day, that's what we're all here for, right? Is more joy, more happiness. Um, so it's, it's really amazing. And you really provide the care and support through the whole process in the sense that um, no one makes that decision lightly. It's not an overnight decision or a spur of the moment. It is a deep um, introspective journey to get to the space to, to take the steps to make the physical changes. And it's very vulnerable. And mm-hmm. for you to be able to hold the space for them to come in and speak the truth about who they are and what they want to reflect on the outside and to walk them through that amazing transformation. Um, You really have to have a caring, you know, warmer side than just, you know, a lot of surgery has to be kind of cold and non-emotional and, you know, and I think that you really bring that into your, your practice and it's pretty special. And you've, um, written something to help your patients in that process. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Um, in terms of the, uh, the things to think about when you're being, when you're preparing for surgery. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I'm in the process of creating quite a bit of um, literature for my patients, but I, there is so much that goes into surgery that people don't realize. And in terms of setting yourself up for success. And a lot of people don't think about um, the things that I think are critical, which is how well you're gonna be supported after surgery. Mm -hmm. So um, that is, because that can be a financial piece. So how, um, you know, how much they've given thought to being out of work for a certain number of weeks, 
and or if they have either a complication or they're struggling more than they thought they would, you know, can they take a little more time off? Who's going to care for their kids? Um, who's going to care for them? And then the other piece is their community. So, you know, who your, your safety net or the people who are going to really take care of you. Um, you've got to feel comfortable with them and you've got to feel uh, like they support not only you, but your decision to have surgery. Mm-hmm. Because all of the little interpersonal dynamics, if there's tension or if there's uh, you know, marital issues, everything is magnified and exacerbated during the time of your recovery. And all of that can lead to increased stress. And at the end of the day, stress impacts your healing. It impacts your, um, you know, it impacts your kind of internal cheerleader. That's like, you can do this. Everything's going to be awesome. You know, once all of those the stress starts to seep its way in, it, uh, it can really derail all that positive thinking. And then, you know, we, we know that the outcomes aren't as good and you're not as compliant with what you need to do. And so that, so those are these are main things that I, I think people don't stop and think about. And oftentimes when people come in for like a surgery consultation, they're really just focused on the technical aspect of it. Uh-huh. And then... Uh, the fun, and then how much it costs and how much time they need off work. So that all these little things that they don't tease out that end up making a huge difference. So we try to make them think about that on the front end. Yeah. And I see a lot of uh, post-surgery clients in my practice. And that's the thing that, like, when I know someone's going in for surgery, I'm like, okay, so... You know, you have to look at not only the best case scenario and the average, but also worst case scenario, because a lot of people go into surgery thinking, oh, you know, it's an outpatient surgery. I'll go home. I'll be fine the next day. And they don't realize that the time it takes for your body to repair from the surgery and um, how mentally exhausting that is. And, you know, so it sounds like you really make a point to prepare them like, hey, you're going to need people around you. And you might need to take more time off of work than you're planning and, you know, to encompass all of uh, those different, you know, thing factors that can happen Mm -hmm. Um, because I've had just so many people come out of surgery and they weren't prepared for the scenario that happened for them because they weren't average or, um, you know, even someone lied to them. Oh, it was great. You know, I was all healed up in this amount of time and you're going to be fine. And then they have surgery and their friend eventually says, well, you know, I just didn't want to scare you. You know, the truth is, you know, it took twice as long as I told you. And, you know, so when you can have honest conversations and prepare your patients to know what's coming and to make sure they have the support for that, um, I think it makes a huge difference in recovery. So... Yeah, that's an excellent point. Um, you know, I think we can pre- hope for the best, prepare for the worst type of scenario. And I really do think um, some people just don't want to hear about what could possibly happen. But the, the truth is, you know, we got to go in with eyes wide open and prepared. Um, and the, you know, the, another hard part about my job or what I, what I put a lot of effort into is not just this you know, preparing patients for surgery, but more assessing whether or not they're candidates for surgery. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because I spent, you know, many years in training, learning how to do the operations, but definitely at being out in practice, the hardest part of my job is figuring out who to say no to, who isn't ready, um, because it's a, it's oftentimes, well, for some people, just not the right answer, you know, not what they truly need. It's more of a band-aid for something that's, you know, running deeper. Yeah, and I, I think that's a huge piece is because um, any surgery is a big commitment. Um, you know, a lot of people think, oh, it's just a minor surgery, um, but it's surgery. It's you're doing a significant change to your body, whether you can see it or whether you can feel it. Um right it's significant. 
And yeah. so making sure that people are in the right mental and emotional state for that um, instead of, you know, I'm really angry. I'm going through this breakup. I hate myself. I want to, I want to like myself better through this physical change, but that, that doesn't heal, you know, the hurt inside and that you take that into account when you're doing your assessment to make sure that you're like, this might be the right choice, but not right now go down that path a little farther. And if you still want to, and I think that's huge and very responsible, um, for your patients to value them that way. So. Well, what I, oh, thank you for saying that. I, I just, it came, I came, it's, unfortunately, you know, I've, I've gone through some experiences, uh, um, you know, just uh, realizing that, that on those patients who either uh, have gone through a significant amount of trauma and are just trying to feel better about themselves or, um, you know, have deeper things that they need to work on. If, if I operate on them, it can actually make them more depressed mm -hmm. and, you know, can, can be really hard on them emotionally because they've invested all of their energy in this surgery and paying for it and all this, thinking it's going to cure something. So thinking it's going to make them feel better about themselves or help them forget, you know, that, they're with an abusive relationship or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then they realize, oh my gosh, they've gone through all of this and they still are not happy. And that, that to me is um, if I can help tease that out and, and prevent them from going through that, I will, you know, no amount of money for a surgery is worth um, making someone worse because I got into this to make people better. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, so I feel like it is my, it is my, my job, um, at least the way I see it. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's what really differentiates you as a plastic surgeon is that it is the whole person approach, you know, that it's not just um, fixing something external and doing that because you're being asked to, it's, you know, looking at them as a whole and making sure that that really is what they're asking for. Because, you know, when they're asking for that external, but really what they're asking for is to feel better in this other situation. Right. Um, I just think it's very admirable that you're looking for that. You know, you're, mm -hmm. there's no guarantee you're going to catch everybody because us as humans right. are very right. good with our issues and hiding them. But mm -hmm. Well, yeah. you know, the, the cool thing about what I do um, is that my patients are with me for life, you know. So when they start, if I feel like they're not ready or, or, or it's not right for them, um, I, I usually have them come back for a check-in and I give them, you know, ways to start, um, you know, thinking about making changes and, uh, you know, sometimes people just need little tweaks and then they're ready for surgery or sometimes they need little tweaks and they realize I don't need surgery. You know, that's the, you know, a great, great uh, scenario for both of us to be in. Um, and, uh, you know, because what we do doesn't definitely has risks associated. So it's, it's so worth it on the front end, you know, to make sure that people are that it's appropriate. Yeah. Because I definitely do have patients who come in and they've got issues that I can see and that they seem very realistic about it. Like, yep, just got this extra skin here from having all these kids. And could you just take that off? That'd be great. And I do it. And they are super happy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, those are definitely also uh, common scenarios. But mm -hmm. and I just, I find it, it's so worth taking the extra time. Absolutely. Do you, um, do you have any like advice or guidance around somebody who is thinking about having a surgery of when is the time to, to actually reach out and start talking about it? Yeah. I, I think the, the scenario I just had was a perfect one where, you know, you've had these kids, you're done having kids, you've done all the work and the skin is not going to just go away that you're probably ready to make that call right. uh, if it's bothering you so much and um mm -hmm. but are yep. there any other um types of 
cues, like personal cues that are helpful for people to know when to start the conversation? Well, you, uh, so in terms of your physical, you know, like bodily, re- you know, readiness, um, in terms of like breasts or abdomen surgery, you really want to be close to your goal weight. And not that weight is an indicator of health or happiness, because we all have different, you know, um, different points where we feel good in our body. So, you know, I don't have a certain BMI cut off, but just when you feel like this is your happy homeostasis, um, and that's different for everyone. And, uh, you know, we want you to be stable there before doing any contouring, because if we do contouring too early and then you lose more weight or something, um, then you'll just end up with more skin and we have to do more revisions. Mm-hmm. So you want it to be worth your money so, and time to, to get down to a, a weight that you're happy with. Um, but there's more, there's more to it. So I definitely, definitely think it's important for people to not be in the middle of a crisis. Mm-hmm. Financial crisis, um, you know, unstable home life, uh, high levels of stress. I think can be a really dangerous time to have surgery because, uh, you know, those, those foundation elements that keep you safe and secure and stress are, are not optimized. So, you know, certainly um, big situations like a loss of a loved one or um, a big divorce, you know, those things give yourself some time to, find a little, um, you know, stability in your life, that, that's, that's what you need to do at that point. And then you can come talk about surgery, but just give yourself time. Um, no, I, I think it's, it's different for everyone, but um, some people are, don't meet necessarily the criteria of having their weight down or being stable. But I still think it's worth coming in for a consultation because sometimes just talking with me and getting a game plan can be a great motivator, but it also kind of pivots you in the right direction or gives you a, a um, gives you a, something to work towards and we can come up with a, a customized plan for you. Um, so if you're just needing kind of a lifestyle recommendations and um, reboot, then you know down the road surgery might be an option yeah and i know that uh you had actually mentioned before you know if somebody was coming in for like liposuction or something like that and they'd been doing all of the work to try and actually eat healthy and exercise and they weren't getting the results uh that you've made other recommendations like maybe uh, there's a hormone issue or maybe Mm -hmm. there's a dietary thing that they don't know about and because if they're, they have, um, they're putting the effort in and maybe they just need guidance in another direction instead of, you know, the surgery at the moment. So you have a lot of um, awareness of those options. And so that's another reason why it would be a good time to come in and look for guidance is because even if it's surgery isn't the next step, you can help guide them with the interim steps. Yeah. Absolutely. It's less of a formal surgical consultation and more of a, an, an assessment or a, mm-hmm. a, a, where we can figure out your next step. So some people come talk to me and they don't have a good primary care doctor. They, um, you know, haven't kind of gone through the, um, through those channels or, uh, if they, um, you know, maybe could cut back on the alcohol intake or, you know, just little things. Um, my, my assessments are pretty comprehensive in terms of nutrition, but it's all mostly stemming from this concept of um, stress and reducing inflammation and then making mm-hmm. sure that you are, um, all the medical needs have been covered or you know, at least investigated as much as possible. Maybe yeah. they need to see a naturopathic doctor maybe what they need is some intensive counseling or, um, 
you know, uh, uh, trauma of work to help manage something that happened, you know, at a young age. But what I, what I really draw from, truthfully, is this concept of, of our bodies really know what they need. You just need to have enough time um, for someone to be open and receive that information and just talking through things. By the end of it, most people have the answer already. They just mm -hmm. kind of need someone else to validate them. Yeah. And so many times it's like, well, I probably shouldn't be having, you know, such and such, uh, I don't know, you name it. I probably shouldn't be doing this or I probably shouldn't be doing that. And it's uh -huh. like, oh, yes, that's, that's your body telling you <laughs> you probably shouldn't be doing those things. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, we've, we've all been there and life being human is one of the most amazing joys, but we all have struggles every single day. You know, I do all these Facebook and Instagram posts and yada, yada, and my stuff is not per 100%. Uh, it's easy to get bogged down and think that that you know you're the only one who can't make make it all work. But we're all just trying to make it work every day. Um, so sometimes you just need someone to sit with you and stare you in the eyes and be like, <laughs> "And I don't think it's stressing you out." You know, the other thing is, you know, most of us are maybe experts in our own way. Um, whether it's a computer tech person or a customer service person or whatnot, um, but you're an expert in surgery and assessment um, and seeing the whole person. And so, you know, it's different than just talking to your friends who, you know, maybe are in food service or tech development or mm -hmm. transportation or whatnot. They're, they're not going to necessarily be the best um, fit to have that conversation with. So right. when you're looking for an expert to validate you, Mm -hmm. um, there so, you are <laughs> yeah it's so true yeah well and I'm I just really appreciate what you offer as well because I think that touch uh is is so important for healing and so important for uh the movement of fluid you know um lymphatic fluids and and uh I'm really grateful to the wellness center that you have put together and um, to, for my patients to have that as a resource is just incredible, really incredible. Well, thank you. I, I love getting to work with uh, post-surgical clients. I love that my team members know how to do lymphatic drainage and, and hold space for people because surgery is a big deal. And often, you know, like you've experienced when people have that, the emotional release that comes from the relief of, and the fulfillment of that mm -hmm. part and being mm -hmm. able to, you know, hold space for people and work on their bodies in an intimate way is, it's a gift, makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, our, our team is really glad to do that. And we're, we really appreciate getting to work with you as well. And having someone that we admire that we can refer to for mm -hmm. surgeries as well. So yeah, it's so nice. It's so nice. It's fun. I mean, you know, my, I look at my job as being very intimate as well with people. Oh you know? yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, you just immediately feel a massive connection and a and responsibility and, and it's, it's neat when it can all work in harmony. Mm -hmm. So um, I, would you like to share some of your contact information um, I know that we are going to be sharing that uh, maybe in the comments and the post, and this should be linked to your page for people to be able to find you. Um, but if you wanted to just share the best phone number or sure. like, how, how should people find you? <laughs> well, um, there are a variety of ways people can find me. <laughs> um, I, yeah, so my, my surgical practice is through North State Plastic Surgery. So there's a website, northstateplasticsurgery.com. Um, but there's also, they're on Facebook, uh, North State Plastic Surgery. Um, and then I also have a medical spa called Beauty Eternal. Um, and we offer, you know, the full breadth of non-surgical modalities. Um, and they are Beauty Eternal Chico. Um, 
They're on Facebook as well as Instagram. And then the phone number for consultations is 530-345-5900. Uh, and they can put you through if you're interested in a surgical consultation. And then um, in terms of uh, me personally, I do have a website, emilyhartmanmd.org. That is my blog and um, just other exciting and fun things that I'm putting out there. It's really just my creative outlet, <laughs> um, but it's a great way to stay connected with me with emails and you can subscribe. Um, so it's also Emily Hartman MD uh, on Instagram as well. So I'm pretty reachable. All you got to do is DM me and I should get back to you pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've been very easy to communicate with. That's been Aww. very pleasant. Thank you. Um, oh, and we also are still offering virtual consults, which mm -hmm. now, you know, with the coronavirus thing, I'm amazed at how much we can get accomplished virtually, which for my job, you would think is really hard. But, you know, you really can make most of the assessment and then have you come in in person for the pre-out visit. So definitely, you know, give us a call if you would like to do that as well. Yeah, that's wonderful. I, I do like how uh, we have all gotten to expand on the use of technology <laughs> to become more convenient in the things that we've already been doing. Right? So, oh, yeah. It's incredible. I'm like, geez, our efficiency has gone up 25%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is great. And people can be in the comfort of their own homes and their pajamas. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I certainly appreciate it, that's for sure. <laughs> Oh, thank you so well, much. Yeah, Emily, it's been wonderful talking to you. Um, you I think you're a very special person, and I loved uh, getting to share this with um, everyone who will take advantage of watching and learning about your practice and your whole person approach to surgery. And mm -hmm. um, we will be uh, sharing this video. It will stay on the Facebook page, and we are redoing our website, so you'll be able to go back and find this video to share with any of your friends and to rewatch. Awesome. And um, if anybody <laughs> wants to, um, where, where was I going? Oh yeah, we are doing this every week on creating a sustainable use. So if you'd like to tune in uh, for more of our shows, connecting with local uh, businesses who are here to help and share a little bit about themselves as well as if you happen to be a local business that you'd like to be on here, feel free to reach out and contact us. And I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Yay. Bye. Thank you so much. Love <laughs> being on. I appreciate it. All right. Bye. Have a great day. Bye.